we've written so many books and we've offered so many processes and every process is about getting into the vortex because every process is about releasing resistance and we recognize that sometimes you're in a very uncomfortable place and when we say cheer up you just like to punch our lights out in other words nothing is more disturbing than to know what you want and not be anywhere near it and have someone saying well it's just over there go over there it's, it's over there just go get it what's wrong with you go over there because if you could you would is what you want to say do you think that I like being here with not enough money do you think I like being here in this body that isn't working well do you think I like being here in this empty bed do you think I like being here where I'm absent of so many things that I want that's what your feedback often is and we understand that sometimes you just can't seem to get there from there sometimes you'll have a conversation with someone we know you have where you have something very clear that you would like to say even Jerry and Esther as aligned as they are occasionally we'll have a situation where they see it differently and both of them are so sure that their perspective is the right way of seeing it and the other day Esther said after pondering something like that for an hour or so it was shocking when I realized that your opinion even though it's wrong <laughs> is valid in other words you have as much right to your wrong opinion as I have to my right opinion <laughs> And Jerry looked at her as if to say, I don't think you've made any progress yet. <laughs> but it was a good first step. In other words, acknowledging that what Esther was acknowledging in that moment is that she could not, oh, we'll tell you what happened. So <laughs> they were driving to meet friends for dinner and they had a specific time to meet and they left with plenty of time and Esther programmed the navigational system and Esther is driving and off they go and when Jerry realized that they had more time than they really needed he pulled a premeditated piece of paper out of his pocket which he had not revealed to Esther before that he would like to stop by this address because it was the house that he lived in when he was born and Esther felt hesitation about it because she thought she had planned their timing exactly right for any eventuality and did not want to be late and Jerry who likes to use up every possible moment that can be used <laughs> thought that they should cram this in and so Esther said oh I don't think so because I would have to redo this navigational thing and and it might take us off in the wrong place and who knows what traffic's going to be and Jerry said okay and he put it back in his pocket and then Esther thought I don't know why I'm making such a big thing about this we probably do have plenty of time so she said what is the address and he gave it to her and she programmed it in so they went down they took the street they were right in downtown San Diego and they drove to where the house was and it was so fun to see the neighborhood and Esther looks at the navigational system and she realizes that they have 12 minutes to make it and only three miles to go and so she's completely at ease she knows that they are going to make their way there comfortably meandering through the streets of San Diego and so Esther has put out of her head this is Esther's version <laughs> Esther has put out of her head any worry about being there on time so they're going along and Esther is hitting every single light just barely just barely but she's in the flow every light is turning green and Jerry is wondering why she doesn't speed up a little bit because she's barely making every single light but Esther is not aware of what Jerry is thinking she's just in the flow and feeling great and they get there and they have a wonderful dinner with their friends and then their friends begin talking about their relationship and then Jerry with a grin on his face pipes in yeah well Esther deliberately tries to miss lights in order to make her point <laughs> And Esther said, no, I didn't. 
how could you think that of innocent, innocent me? Well, we've told enough stories about Esther rather being right than feeling good that it's easy to understand why Jerry might be suspicious of her motives. But here is the point that we are wanting to make with this experience. Esther was, from her perspective, really not even thinking about that anymore. She'd left it behind. Jerry was still worried that he was going to make Esther late. And so he was seeing the exact thing from one perspective and Esther was seeing the exact thing from another perspective and Esther realized she tried to explain and they were all laughing about it and Jerry was really playing with her more than anything else but Esther realized that she could talk until she was blue in the face she could talk she could write a book about it <laughs> it's not worth it don't do it <laughs> And Jerry would not see it differently because what his perspective of the moment in time was, was far more about other things that had happened or his perspective on the subject than it was what was actually happening in the moment. In other words, you spend way, 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 way too much of your life if you spend any of it trying to make others understand where you're coming from because they can't get you and it's such an interesting thing in other words there are no two people who like each other more than these two and yet they saw the same moment in time completely different and it is from our words to your ears a waste of life to spend any time trying to convince others of your point of view and even more to try to persuade them to approve of you or to appreciate you through the presentation to them that you are offering and yet almost every one of you is offering a presentation to others to evoke some sort of response from those around you now Pleasing others, we're not against it. We're not saying that you shouldn't be nice to live with and that sort of thing. But when you care more about the perspective that those that you walk around in human form with, you care more about their perspective than you do about your alignment with who you are, you're letting them and you're letting yourself train yourself away from your guidance system. In other words, you, it gets off, it gets off, it gets off immediately. So think about it. So after the fact, if Esther had come away from that dinner conversation more convinced than ever that she has to really convey to Jerry what she's feeling in every moment in time, we say what an awkward, bulky, potentially unpleasant relationship that would become to be rationalizing and defending and justifying your every motive and move where when you know who you are and you know what you meant and you know how you feel let that be enough and let it not matter if one other person gets you at all because ultimately if you consistently go with the flow of your vortex and align with who you are if you ultimately sync up with the whole of who you are you will begin radiating such a consistent vibration of love and well-being that in time anyone who's in the vicinity of you will get you and anyone who's not in the vicinity of you won't get you but they weren't going to get you anyway but what most of you are doing is offering a really mixed bag because you care what this one thinks and you care what that one thinks and you care what that one thinks and especially the one you live with you care what that one thinks and that's why those interpersonal relationships with your mothers and your fathers and your sisters and your brothers and your mates and your lovers all of those relationships are so much less than they could be because you have your priorities out of order you have to let the relationship that really matters be the relationship between you and your vortex. And when you put that relationship first and you make sure that you know what it feels to be in resonant alignment with who you are, then the edge just comes off of you. You are never defensive. You are never justifying. You're always in your power. 
the reason that anybody that you know even you has ever misbehaved ever even one time is because you have not been feeling your power and you've been trying to make up for it in some way that really is impossible where when you are in sync with who you are ah, then the cells of your body are all communicating you're thriving your mind is sharp you're clear-minded you have balance love is flowing through you the best of life is a vibrational match to you everywhere you go doors are opening people who are watching you are wondering what magical power you have and even though they won't understand it when you say it it's the power of the vortex it's the power of alignment it's the power of syncing up with who I really am it's the power of being real-time present tense tuned in tapped in, turned on to the frequency of all that I have become it's me full-on full-blown me full-on that's what this power is about you see we've enjoyed this in So you've come to discuss some things, yes? We are eager to visit with you. Nothing is off limits. It will unfold powerfully and perfectly. So as you just relax and chill, we'll get there for you. You are knowing what you are wanting? Really? You think you do, but really you don't. And the reason that we know that you don't really know what you want, you can't tell us. You can't tell us what you want with any real precision because you've been carving that out over a very long time. You've been incrementally putting the details of your desire into your vortex one by one by one by one by one. So your desire, who you really are, all that you've become has been amassing over time and as it has been amassing law of attraction has been assembling all of the cooperative components so as your desire has been becoming do you get what we mean by that as you are here in this physical body sifting through the details of your experience knowing what you don't want and therefore knowing what you do want carving it out conversation by conversation experience by experience exposure to life by exposure to life you have been creating from your opinion which matters very much a version of life as you choose it to be that's who you have become and that's what you want but because this vortex of creation has been culminating over time we've never met a human ever who could articulate with any precision at all the detail the precision the specifics the emphatics the perfection of what you have created you are the creator of you and there is a vibrational version of you who exists in your vortex of creation a version of you a vibrational version who like all vibrational versions of all things and all things have vibrational versions your vibrational version precedes your manifested version this earth that spins in its orbit in perfect proximity to other planets was a vibrational creation first before it became the manifestation that you know it's a nice thing when you have confidence in who you are that holds you steady regardless of what the conditions look like and that is an important thing now we're not saying to you to disregard if if the pilot says put the parachute on and jump do it do it so you come from source and a part of you is here in this body 
And while you're here, you are exploring. But the thing that most of our physical friends don't really get is that through this physical exploration, you are creating a vibrational version of you that really is the reason that you've come forth. You are eternal creators. You are